result after result was greeted with sheer joy at the headquarters of the National League for Democracy in Yangon. Under the previous military regime, this was a sensitive area, closely watched by the police. Not anymore. It's now a place of celebration after an election that saw Aung San Suu Kyi win a seat in parliament. This is the happiest moment of my life. I feel so happy. It's made all the hard work worthwhile. Suu Kyi spent the first part of the day in her constituency of Kormu, a poor rural area to the south of Yangon. She couldn't vote in this election because she didn't live in the area she ran to represent, but she visited several polling booths. This was her first chance to see the process after being under house arrest during the previous two elections. She had already said this poll wouldn't be free and fair, and it didn't take long for some voters to find that out for themselves, complaining of damaged voting papers and names missing from the registers. Okay. I waited so long for this chance to vote. I feel sad and angry that now my ballot has become invalid. International observers were invited by the government, but they weren't allowed inside the polling stations. If that is the rule of the, of, of the, if that is the election rule, then we have to observe that. Yeah. The by-election and the involvement of Suu Kyi and the National League for Democracy captured many people's imaginations around the country. In Kormu, people came from far away to watch the voting and to say they were there when she was finally allowed to claim an election win. In the former capital Yangon, the celebrations spilled onto the streets and are likely to go on for a long time. Many people around Myanmar, in particular supporters of the NLD, hope their country has taken a step towards becoming a real democracy. But after almost 50 years of military rule, there is a lack of trust still that'll take more than just a by-election to break down. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Yangon.